What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. My name is Milk and have you ever heard that shooting film slows you down? It doesn't have to be that way. Let's see how. Shooting film slows you down. It's true to some extent. First, you have limited number of frames, so you have to be careful what you shoot and what you don't shoot. But the another factor that slows you down is the fact that not all cameras and lenses are auto focusing or auto exposure. So if you use a manual lens, like for example, like this one, focusing correctly might be tricky especially if you shoot wide open. So first, let me explain the concept of depth of field for a bit. Have you seen when you shoot a portrait mode on your phone and the background is all blurry and things? That simulates the look of shooting with a portrait lens. Well, a portrait lens is usually around 85 millimeters focal length, but it can be 50, but okay, beside the point, to achieve the shallow depth of field. So the depth of field is the distance more like the area that the subject will be in focus. If the depth of field is deep, then a lot will be in focus. But if the depth of field is shallow, that means very little distance will be in focus. So usually to achieve the shallow depth of field look is one, to use large aperture like f1.8. Another way you can achieve the shallow depth of field is use telephoto lens. So the wider the focal length is, the deeper the depth of field will be at the same aperture. Let's say um, this lens is a 50mm f1.8. Shooting 50mm f1.8 at the same focus distance with a 35mm f1.8. The image you get from a 50mm f1.8 will have shallower depth of field. That's how it works. The longer the focal length, the easier to get shallow depth of field. And the third factor that contributes to shallow depth of field is the focus distance. So here's an example. If I am close to my lens, like this, the background is more blurry. But if I move back further away, the background becomes more in focus and that's the concept of shallow depth of field. So when you shoot wide open, to get the shallow depth of fill, it can be hard to focus because you have to get it just right. You can, that little room for error, you have to get the focus just right. Like if you're shooting a portrait of somebody, you have to focus right on their eyes correctly. And because it's filmed together, just in case shots would cost more money. And you cannot check it right away because no screens. So that is where zone focusing comes in. And to be able to use a zone focusing technique effectively, it's a good idea to know how to read the distance scale. So let's go. Okay, now we are on the overhead shot. Now let's have a look at how to read the focus distance scale. You see all these numbers, 22, 16, 11, that's the f-stop. So if you set your aperture at f11 like this and focus at three meters, line is up here. You read along the line, set the F at 11. We look at 11s here. This is the distance between five meters to two meters will be in focus. So let's have another example. If you focus at two meters, let's have a look at 11 here. The distance between 1.5 meters to three meters will be in focus. Let's say you switch up to F16 then now we have to look at the 16s here and here. Let's say at 5 meters, distance between about 2.8 meters to infinity will be in focus. If we focus at 1.5 meters at f16, distance between about 1.1 meter to 2 meters will be in focus. 
and sometimes you might find a lens that look like this this is color coordinated so let's say at f8 is the orange color here it corresponds to the orange here and here let's zoom in if we are at f8 we focus at 1.5 meters we look at the orange color here the distance between 2 meters and about 1.3 meters will be in focus if we are at f11 let's say at 2 meters f11 about almost the distance at about almost 5 meters and over 1 meter will be in focus And here's how you read the distance scale on the TLR, Twin Lens Reflex. This here the, is the aperture. So let's say I am at f8. And I want to focus at 6 meters. So at f8, at 6 meters, you look at these lines here. The depth of field will be in focus at in the distance between 10 to about over 4 meters so let's say if we are at f16 we focus at 4 meters the distance between 2.5 meters and 6 meters will be in focus and that's how you read a distance scale and we're back so that is how you zone focus now the limitation of zone focusing is that you have to use small aperture I mean you can use larger aperture too but the larger they're more difficult to focus just right so because of the small aperture that means you have to use either longer shutter speed which might cause motion blur or you can use higher ISO film but if you don't have a high enough ISO film you can push film and to do that you can check out this video to see how it's done I already explained it in that video so to sum up the limitation of zone focusing you need good light, maybe a lot of light. It's not likely suitable for indoor or nighttime photography. And number two, you won't get shallow depth of field for the portrait look. And by the way, the zone focusing technique is more maybe suitable for street photographers who usually do not need the shallow depth of field because most of the time they like to include the environmental aspects with the subject of sports photographers because first they do not really care about shallow depth of field it's not a beauty shot it's a documentary style photographing so using a small aperture with a wider lens will give you like huge depth of field that is like everything almost everything is going to be in focus and that's been it that's how you zone focus thank you for watching this video if this video was helpful for you in any way consider liking or subscribing and if you made it through the end, I thank you very much and that's been it. I'll see you in the next video.